Hello and welcome back to another slow cook video. So I've got another four really simple step-by-step -step recipes for you to try in your crock pot or slow cooker. If you're new here, then my name is Vicky and I do a lot of food content on this channel. I've also got an entire slow cooker recipe playlist, so I'll leave that linked in the description box. This video contains one of my favorite slow cooker things I've ever, ever made. So make sure you stick around for the last recipe because it will absolutely blow your mind. It's gone straight onto our favorites list and we've already made it again twice since I filmed this video so it's definitely a hit in this house. I will leave all the recipes I've followed linked in the description box. I will also type out my ingredients that I use so that you can follow along exactly and if you're not already subscribed I'd really like you to go and do so. I'm in the process of filming another slow cooker video as we speak and every week I do meals of the week which is basically a video of all our family meals just really simple cooking and I also do shopping hauls and things like that so without further ado let's go and have a look at what I've been making in my slow cooker. So this recipe is a slightly different take on a full English breakfast. I've seen this on Pinterest, I've seen it on Instagram, and I just thought it looked very intriguing. I will admit I've never done it before, so I am interested to see how this is gonna turn out, but we are gonna cook a full English breakfast, or the majority of it, in our slow cooker. Now if this comes out well, I can see us putting this all together of an evening and then just before you go to bed on like Saturday night, switching it on. And can you imagine getting up Sunday morning to a full cooked English breakfast without having to cook it? Like, it sounds genius. So what I've got to start with is some mugs that I popped into my slow cooker. And I'm gonna pop a little bit of butter in the bottom of this one. This is a slightly smaller mug. And I'll just show you. It's just a normal Kit Kat mug. I've just put about a half a teaspoon of butter in there and I'm literally just gonna pop some mushrooms in the mug. I'm not gonna chop them because they're quite small ones anyway. Next up, I can't actually believe I'm doing this. I've got some baked beans, which I am going to add to another one of the mugs. My next mug, there's two options with eggs. You could either make up some scrambled egg or like an omelette kind of thing and pop it in a mug. Or obviously you could do fresh eggs like in the morning when you're ready to eat it. Because I'm doing this as a video, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna give it a try and put some eggs in the slow cooker. So I'm not gonna play it safe. So what I'm gonna do is pop a little bit of butter in the bottom. Probably could do with greasing it around the edge if you're gonna make the scrambled egg one. So whilst I was greasing my mug for my eggs, I've actually taken my mushrooms out and greased around the edge of the mug as well because thinking about it, all the butter's just gonna sit at the bottom and the mushrooms at the top aren't gonna get any of the sort of buttery goodness. So took them out, greased around the edge of that as well, popped those back in. So I've got my mug ready, my French Bulldog mug, and I'm gonna crack some eggs into here. I'm gonna pop it back in so you can see. This does feel very strange, I won't lie. So I'm not sure how many we'll get in. So you could probably leave these as they are. So I've got five in there. To this, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper, some milk, and then whisk it together. So we've got our eggs. So we've got beans, mushrooms, eggs. So I have seen some people put hash browns around the edge, but I'm not gonna do that because I think we're gonna have enough anyway. So I've just got some of these Cumberland sausages from Sainsbury's, and I've also got some Sainsbury's bacon. And what I'm gonna do is lay these around the edge. Right, so what I've decided to do, instead of rolling my bacon and then popping my sausages, I think, I'm actually going to wrap my sausages in the bacon as if it was like a Christmas dinner. 
So I've got one sausage, one rasher of bacon, and then with that, I'm just gonna stand these seam side against the edge all around the side of the slow cooker. Like that. Right, so there's my sausages all around the edge. I've decided I've got space for one more item. So I'm thinking some tomatoes in here. So I'm gonna get another mug and grease it. I'm just gonna pop it in here as well because we've got the room, so we might as well use it up. And I'm just gonna pop a few tomatoes in the mug. And they will cook down. Am I gonna get one more? We're gonna go for one more. I hopefully the lid will still go on. So what I'm going to do now is pop this on low for six to eight hours. I'm gonna check the egg, see how it goes. And fingers crossed it works because I've just had a thought that this could be a brilliant idea for Christmas dinner. You know, when you don't have enough space in your oven to do your pigs in blankets. So I'm thinking you could use this for other things. You could have your sausages and bacon around the edge and like your stuffing in the middle, or you could put some cauliflower cheese or something like in a dish in the middle of it you could use your slow cooker christmas day but i think this looks amazing and i'm really excited to see how it turns out so yeah i'm going to pop the lid on six to eight hours on low and i'll let you know at the end exactly how long it took and show you what it looks like so here we are after i'm going to say probably about five hours five and a half hours definitely didn't need six um, the eggs completely cooked the beans are piping hot the sausages are cooked and I'm really impressed so here we are plated up all fancy looking um, I'm very very impressed although I will be honest and say from an aesthetic point of view the egg tastes like egg but I probably wouldn't do it in the slow cooker again because just it doesn't look very appetizing. Uh, scrambled egg never really does but no I would probably leave out the egg and cook some fresh fried eggs they literally take minutes or just scramble them. Scrambled eggs take a few seconds really don't they in a pan so everything else perfect not a fan of the look of the eggs they're just putting me off but it does really, really make me think about Christmas and saving time by putting the sausages in bacon in the slow cooker because they've even come out nice and crispy where I've put them against the side because sometimes in the slow cooker you get that like really white underdone look. So there you have it, slow cooker, full English breakfast. So for this recipe we are making a creamy Tuscan chicken pot and this is a recipe that I have based on Dean Edwards slow cooker recipe. I've got his book which is called Low and Slow, something like that. I will leave it linked in the description box anyway. It's a really good book and it's got loads and loads of slow cooker recipes. I have adapted this one slightly because I have changed a few ingredients and I'm also doubling it. So I'm gonna make this to serve eight people. So if I take you through the ingredients I'm using to serve eight, if you wanted to do it to serve four, then you could just halve them. So I've got two packets of chicken thigh fillets. There's probably about 12 here. I've got two chopped onions. I've got 120 grams of sun-dried tomatoes. These were just in like an olive and vegetable oil mix. I've got the equivalent of, it says eight cloves of garlic. I've used frozen garlic and I would say there's about six teaspoons in there. So there's 400 ml of chicken stock. I'm gonna use two teaspoons of chili flakes. And then at the end, we're gonna use 200 grams of the orzo pasta, about four handfuls of baby spinach, and about four tablespoons of the creme fraiche and I'm using the lighter one. So I know with some slow cooker recipes, people wanna throw everything in the slow cooker together and just leave it. I'm sure you could do that with this recipe, but it does recommend browning the chicken first. 
I always find this has a much better flavour. The rest of it I think I'm going to pop straight into the slow cooker, turn it on, leave it for about six hours and then later on we're going to add our orzo, our creme fraiche and our spinach. So for the oil to brown the chicken thighs I'm just going to use what the tomatoes came in because it will just add some extra flavour. So it's sunflower oil with some extra virgin olive oil and I'm just going to pop that in my hot pan. So now my chicken thighs have browned, I'm going to add my onion and my sun-dried tomatoes to my pot. I've chopped my sun-dried tomatoes up. And I'm going to add in my garlic, about two teaspoons of chilli flakes. And then I'm going to pop my chicken. And I'm also going to add any of the juices left in the pan because that'll add to the flavour. Next up I'm going to add my chicken stock and then we're going to pop this on low for around six hours before we get on to our next step. Right so we've been cooking for about six hours now and the chicken is starting to fall apart really nicely. The house smells amazing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt because I haven't added any seasoning yet. And half a teaspoon of black pepper. And then I'm going to pop in my orzo. Because I've doubled the recipe, I'm going to add 250 grams. And I'm just going to guess roughly it's about half this pack. And then I'm going to pop my lid back on and we're going to leave it for another hour. an hour later and our orzo has cooked through nicely so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add around four tablespoons of creme fraiche and a couple of really big handfuls of spinach and then I'm going to turn my slow cooker off and give it five minutes just to wilt through spinach goes down to almost nothing I'm going to stir that through I'm going to pop my lid on And I will show you it plated up. So here we are all dished up and I've just sprinkled a little bit of coriander on the top. And I'm serving it with some of this really appetising looking San Francisco rye style sourdough bread. I got it from Marks and Spencer's and it looks really nice. And then we have our creamy Tuscan chicken pot. I will leave the link to the book in the description and also the ingredients I used just in case you miss any. Right, so for my next recipe, I'm gonna make something called deviled sausages. So we're gonna start off with 10 outdoor bread pork sausages. This one requires apples, but you can't really taste them. It just adds a little bit of sweetness. So I've got three apples, which I'm going to peel and core. I'm going to use two onions, one small and one massive one. We need 500 ml of beef stock. I'll leave all the ingredients typed out in the description box down below, just in case you miss anything. So I'm going to use two tins of peeled plum tomatoes. We're going to need two tablespoons of soy sauce four tablespoons of Worcester sauce, so about 120 grams of brown sugar, four tablespoons of tomato puree, two tablespoons of corn flour, we're going to use two teaspoons of paprika and then some garlic, so I'm probably going to put around two crushed cloves of garlic and also some salt and pepper. So in here I've added my corn flour, 500ml of beef stock, I've added my Worcester sauce, my soy sauce, some garlic and my paprika, some tomato puree and I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm also going to pop my brown sugar in here and then mix my two tins of tomatoes in and this is your sauce. 
And then all that's left to do is put the sausages in the slow cooker and slice the apples and onions. And then this goes over the top and we're just gonna leave it to cook. thing I'm going to do is pop my sausages into my slow cooker. I'm using 10 because there's five of us so we get two each. Next up I'm going to pop my sliced onion over the top. To the top of that I've got three sliced apples. I've used Granny Smith's but you could use any apple. It's just what I've got in the fridge. So on top of that I'm going to pour my two tins of tomatoes. You could use chopped if you want but they will break down in the slow cooker and then in here we've got our mixture we made with our corn flour our soy sauce our worcester sauce our smoked paprika garlic tomato puree and beef stock some brown sugar and i'm going to add salt and pepper after cooking because then you can taste it because there's a lot of flavors going on and i don't want to overdo it so i'm just going to pour this all over the top a straight bit of onion there <laughs> So now all we're going to do is just mix this over and make sure the sausages are completely coated. So as with all my recipes, I cook them on low for six to eight hours, but you could do them on high for three to four hours. It's completely up to you. So I'm going to turn this on now. I'm going to start off with six hours and then obviously if it still needs a little bit more, then we can go longer and we will taste it when the sausages are cooked. Right, so we are about six hours later and our casserole is cooking really nicely. One thing I will say is using the Granny Smith's apples, they haven't disintegrated as much as I thought they would. They've stayed pretty whole, so that's something to think about if you are going to be using apples and you don't want them to stay in like whole pieces, then I would use a softer apple because Granny Smith's are actually quite hard. It depends whether you like that or not. What I'm going to do now, I haven't added any salt, so I'm just going to put one teaspoon of salt, well... I say a teaspoon, this orange spoon. So it's probably a little less than a teaspoon of salt. I'm also gonna add an orange spoon of cayenne pepper, completely optional. Just taste it and see what you feel like. I always get a lump. If you like your spice, add more. If you don't, don't put any. But I think it just needs a little kick. So I'm just gonna cook some rice and then we are ready to serve. here we are served up I've just served mine with some rice and it smells really good the added cayenne pepper really does give it a nice kick even though it's only a teaspoon so I really recommend it and yeah I'm looking forward to going and sitting and trying this right so for this recipe I'm gonna make a really different but really quick and simple macaroni cheese now you may be looking at the ingredients thinking that doesn't look right but trust me once you try this you will never want to make it any other way so the first thing i'm going to use and i have doubled this recipe so this should serve between six to eight people so if you want to serve less then just halve it so i'm going to use 500 grams of macaroni i'm going to use 120 grams of light mayonnaise two tins of condensed cream of chicken soup i'm going to use a teaspoon of black pepper a teaspoon of Coleman's mustard powder and two teaspoons of onion granules. I'm using 400 grams of cheese. The recipe actually calls for, I think it's 520 grams, but I think 400 grams is plenty. Um, it's cheesy enough and you don't just need to go overboard. So I've got 200 grams of mature cheddar and 200 grams of this vintage Red Fox Red Leicester. I'm also going to use 120 grams of lighter creme fraiche. And that is pretty much everything you're going to need. So what I'm going to do first is boil my macaroni for four minutes so it's al dente. You can put all this just straight in the slow cooker and turn it on if you like. But the macaroni does go a bit mushy. So if you put it into boil until four minutes or I would say a couple of minutes less than it states on your packaging just in case you don't use this one. 
but mine says cook for six minutes so I'm going to give it four and then rinse it straight in cold water to stop it cooking. It actually stops the macaroni going all mushy when it's in the slow cooker. After that part, you literally dump all the other ingredients in, mix it together and turn it on. The only thing I'm going to do at the end is probably add some crispy bacon pieces to the top. So I will show you it as I add it into the slow cooker. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop my ingredients into my slow cooker. So I've got my 120 grams of light mayo. You could use full fat if you want, but we just always have light mayonnaise in this house. I don't find it makes a huge difference. I've used light creme fraiche. You could use light sour cream or normal sour cream or creme fraiche if you'd rather. This is what I've got in. And this is also 120 grams. Two tins of condensed cream of chicken soup. If you are vegetarian, you could use cream of mushroom soup instead. It has the same effect really. It's just a base. This is so simple. I'm gonna put two teaspoons of onion granules. There's one teaspoon, this is really full up, of mustard powder. If you haven't got mustard powder, you could just use mustard, like normal Dijon or normal English mustard. I'm also gonna use one teaspoon of black pepper. So to that, I'm gonna add my 400 grams of cheese. And then my 500 grams of pasta, which I've cooked and rinsed under cold water. So I'm gonna give this a really good stir. And then you could either put this on high for two hours or on low like I'm going to for three hours. And that is it. I'm just gonna fry some crispy bacon bits at the end just to put on top, but you could leave it as it is. Or you could make a breadcrumb mixture to add to the top if you want. The best thing about this now is that I can go do the school run and it will be ready when we get back. Right, so there we go. I'm just going to pop my lid on, pop it on low and check it in three hours. So our macaroni cheese is ready and I can confirm that three hours was the perfect amount of time. It smells amazing and I have just tasted it. And trust me, you will not want to make another recipe for macaroni cheese ever again. This was so simple, so quick. There was no faffing about making a roux or anything like that. And it tastes absolutely amazing. The other thing about this dish is that I've done it to serve six to eight people. And I think it would have cost me no more than three or four pounds for all the ingredients. So a really cheap and filling dinner as well. So I'm gonna put it in a bowl and sprinkle some bacon pieces on top just so it looks nice and fancy to show you. But I'll try and give you a little close up. Very steamy. But it's just, it just looks so good and it just smells amazing. So that is our slow cooker macaroni cheese. I'm just gonna pop some in a bowl. I've just sprinkled some bacon on top we can serve it with some garlic bread or some garlic dough balls so i really recommend you give this one a try i will leave my recipe in the description box and also the original recipe that i based it on just so you can choose which way you do it but i will definitely be making this one again So that is it for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. That macaroni cheese is to die for. If you make one thing from this video, I highly recommend that. But then again, every one of the recipes went down a tree in this house. If you didn't know, I've got three sons and they eat like horses. So the sausages were really good. You could add even more chili to that if you like your spicy kind of food. And the orzo one pot chicken just really felt something really luxurious and a little bit different for a weeknight. So if you're not already subscribed, please go and do so. Leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. And I will be back with more slow cooker and food content really soon. Take care, guys.